actor David Rivera. He's scared of the man in the mirror, cold blooded, calculated. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me hype it up. All right. Anyway, 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 anyway. So Hector David Jr. is being charged with the battery of pushing an old man. Well, recently he was in court. He was in court trying to get the case dismissed. This is the hearing that took place on 9-1. I'll let it rock through for you guys. That'll be Hector David Rivera, Sierra 1424, yeah. uh, 13439. Mr. Myers present here. Uh, good afternoon. Half of Mr. Rivera is present as well. Go ahead, Daisy. All right. Uh, today we have it set for a, a pre-trial conference on the battery charge. And Mr. Gorley, you're appearing on behalf of the state. All right. Uh, let me start with you, Ms. Myers. How do you want to proceed today? We just filed a motion for order to show the injury hearing be set to the matter. All right. So I did see that. And... Let me ask you, Ms. Myers. I'm certainly, I know this was filed a couple days ago, so I, the state certainly needs an opportunity to respond to that. I guess the question is evidentiary hearing. Can you tell me what support you would have for an evidentiary hearing? I'm certainly, uh, as I understand your motion, ultimately you are seeking a dismissal on a Rule 48, correct? Correct. Out the gate, she is seeking a dismissal on a Rule 78, okay? Um, a rule, rule 48. So not accountability. We are seeking a dismissal. This is the lawyer for Hector David Rivera, a.k.a. Hector David Jr. Seeking a dismissal. Pled not guilty. Now, when you see why she's seeking a dismissal, it's going to get super egregious. You're going to be like, what the hell is going on? Why? Like, this is why they're seeking a a dismissal? Right. Uh, I certainly need to hear your motion. Uh, there's no question about that. And the state needs an opportunity to respond to that. So I'm going to schedule that. But I'm not inclined unless you can point me to some authority. I guess I need to know, number one, what authority under the rule do I have for an evidentiary hearing on it? And if so, what would you anticipate what that would look like? I was hoping for more of a oral argument. So we can just schedule it. Okay. All right. Then uh, let me turn to you, Mr. Gorley. You reviewed everything. Um, you're on now you you gotta you gotta realize she wants an evidentiary hearing, and you kind of like low key already cooked. An evidentiary hearing is a legal proceeding where parties present evidence and cross examine witnesses to support their claims. The purpose of an evidentiary hearing is to help guide, help a judge make a fair ruling on the case. Now they're also seeking a jury trial, and when it comes to an evidentiary hearing. The victim does not even have to testify and he, the videotape can speak for itself. He did put his hands on someone without their permission. Let's keep going. Actually, I just noticed I haven't received a task in my file yet. Looking at my course before the hearing, I just discovered the motion. I've been trying to read. Okay. But the, the state will just support this. All right. Well, I'm going to set it for a couple of weeks if that gives you. I think let's, well, let me look and see what my earliest motion is. We do have a bit of a conflict here of the week of the 23rd to the 27th. But I believe the soonest possible date that I think to give the state time uh, would be October 2nd, if that works on your calendar. That's my criminal motion day. I'd like to get it at least resolved um, and addressed sooner. I, if I push it past the 9th, I don't think that's appropriate. So I can still set it the week of, uh, you know, for example, September 30th or the 1st. Now, here's the thing, guys. They're just trying to figure out the dates for uh, uh, Hector is in the courtroom and the victim. Uh, you probably didn't hear it at the beginning, but both Hector and the victim are in the courtroom. Both of those days would work. I'm so sorry. So I'm available anytime after 1130. Okay, why don't we sit then for 130? Okay. That's fine. Uh, 130, October 1st, that's the uh, hearing on the defense motion, uh, which I really construed as a motion to dismiss under Rule 48. If there's other relief uh, and if there's a need for any further type of a hearing, I can assess that at the time. But I think it's really a question of... Uh, hearing some argument on it and really about what authority the court has uh, to uh, order anything the defense is requesting is what I'm really interested in. I don't want to get too much into it. I know Mr. Gorley just got it, but or just hasn't really seen it. But yeah. Okay. And those are just filed. Those are the postings. Right. Okay. All right. Then I'll continue. Generally, it's our first pre 
pretrial conference. I would simply set the pretrial uh, again over for that day. Uh, is there any request to set it on the jury trial calendar today? I generally continue at least once at the first pretrial. Yeah. It would be the state's request today. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, I think this case would like to go to a jury trial. I'd like okay. to have it set so we can make it. All right. Is, what about this? So the prosecutor's like, look, we need to set for a jury trial because one, you know you're not about to get this case dismissed. And they're like, we want to get this ninja in jail. ASAP. Discovery. Has everything been turned over? As far as have you received everything? Okay. So discovery is fine. She received everything. Now the judge's purpose is to make sure that Hector gets a fair trial. Um, and that's 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 literally the judge's purpose for a trial to be fair. And Hey, you want to you want to file a motion to dismiss the case by law? The judge has to hear it, even if it's even no matter how ridiculous it is, because it's so ridiculous when you guys see it. You're going to be like, dude, I thought you was about taking accountability. You're just about doing what's right. All right, Mr. Rivera, uh, the no contact order just so that uh, to Mr. Rivera is in the court. So he's talking to him, did, did looking him dead in the face. Hey, you got a no contact order. Clear on the record. It's going to be in place until uh, July 30th, 2025. Upon dismissal of the case, Trevor Chris first, it may be extended at some point in time. Do not have any contact with uh, James Taylor. Do not go within 500 uh, feet of him or within 500 feet of the address that's listed there uh, that you read on the order. There's no exceptions in here. Read it carefully. That's any contact directly or indirectly. If you have any questions about it, talk to your attorney. It's really important that you abide by it. It is a crime in Idaho to violate a no uh, contact order, separate crime. So make sure you uh, abide by it strictly while the case is pending. All right. All right. Anything else to address? Okay. That's all I have for you. All right. So, hey, they, they let you know. Now, look, just for context purposes, guys, here is, uh, give me a second. Oh, no. Uh, I'm about to show you the court docket just so you can see everything. Uh, and what's going on with your boy Hector? Where are we at? Where are we at? Okay. We are, this is the, where is it at? First hearing. So sorry guys, 828. We're at the first hearing right here. Uh, if you're looking at the screen, this is about, let's see, can I make it bigger? Okay. All right. So we are at the 911, which you guys were just listening to. That was the pretrial hearing. Now we're about to go to the motion to dismiss hearing. And this is where it gets even moronic. Now, remember his personal statement. Let me see if I can pull it up for you guys about, hey, hey, he needs to make things right. This guy, Hector David Jr., wants to make things right. And he comes out the gate letting them know that he wants to dismiss it. And now we're about to have the hearing for the dismissal. And you guys are going to be flies on the wall and you get to see it happen in real time. These, this guy is completely full of it. And I can't believe he's having his lawyer out here doing this. I don't even know like if his lawyer is milking him because this is her areas of practice. And I wonder, did she show up in a pink suit? Uh, but she's about to realize quickly, even though she is from Idaho and used to work for the prosecutor's office, that this guy is not going to see the light of day. Once, once he goes into that courtroom, he might as well make plans because he's going to be convicted. He need to plead out, but let's, let's, Hear his case so you can see how moronic this is. The court's going to take a case today by Hector Rivera, 41143439, and Mr. Rivera is a path of the state. We had it set today for a motion hearing, motion filed by defense. Uh, to show cause and or uh, to dismiss. Uh, so uh, I repeat everything. Thank you for the briefing, uh, to both of you, and I'll turn to you to your motion. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think I stated everything in my motion. I just wanted to briefly touch on um, three and four, which I believe to be the least restrictive um, means to remedy the prejudice in this case, um, whereby the court should order that the Napa Police Department immediately remove the social media posts and issue a retraction and corrective notice. Um, officers have a duty in their dealings with the public, in com including their communications, which the Napa Police Department expressly acknowledges on their own website for its internal Office of Professional Standards. Um, I'd like to read a quote from their um, professional standards page. It says, members of the Nampa Police Department hold did y'all hear that? She said it in the first 10 seconds why she wants the case dismissed. Did y'all catch it? Did you catch it? I don't think y'all caught it. She wants the case dismissed for prejudice because of the Nampo police posted on their website. We're going to get to the post, but just listen, just hear her out. Not because 
someone did something wrong, but for prejudice based on the police posting about it. On, um, uh, to show cause and or uh, to dismiss. Uh, so uh, I repeat everything. Thank you for the briefing, both you and I'll turn to you to your motion. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think I stated everything in my motion. I just wanted to briefly touch on um, three and four, which I believe to be the least restrictive um, means to remedy the prejudice in this case, um, whereby the court should order that the Napa Police Department immediately remove the social media posts and issue a retraction and corrective notice. Um, officers have a duty in their dealings with the public, in including their communications, which the Napa Police Department expressly acknowledges on their own website for its internal Office of Professional Standards. Um, I'd like to read a quote from their um, professional standards page. It says, members of the Nampa Police Department hold a unique status as public officers and the security of the city and its citizens depends to a great extent upon the manner in which members of the department perform their male duties. The performance of such duties involves the members in all manner of contacts and relationships with the public. Out of such contacts and relationships, questions may arise concerning the actions of the members or citizens may simply wish to offer gratitude for the members' actions. Extra judicial statements certainly pose a particular danger in the the context of a criminal case. Um, in the commentary for the IRCP 3.6, this is made clear, and I, do, I already briefed that in my um, memo, but specifically where it says, um, excerpt five, certain subjects that are more likely than not to have material prejudicial effect on our proceedings, um, and highlighting sub one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, the social media posts by the Nampa Police Department run afoul of nearly all of the core concerns at the heart of the ethical rules that govern trial publicity. There are also special duties incumbent upon prosecutors that relate directly to the conduct of the Nampa Police Department as the main investigating agency in this matter. Um, IRCP 3.8 deals with the special responsibilities of the of the prosecutor, which include the duty to exercise reasonable care to prevent investigators, law enforcement personnel, employees, or other persons assisting or associating or associated with the prosecutor in a criminal case from making an extrajudicial statement that the prosecutor would be prohibited from making under 3.6. By its terms, based on the rule or based on that section, the prosecutor is tasked with preventing law enforcement who are involved in the case from making the types of statements that the prosecutor him or herself would be prohibited from making under the rules, which is IRC, IRPC 3.8F. Additionally, the actions of the police in investigating the case can and is directly imputed to the prosecutions for purposes of misconduct analysis. In State v. Ellington, um, the, it's 151 Idaho 53, 2011 is the citation. The Idaho Supreme Court held that even where an officer's improper testimony was unsolicited, gratuitous, and prejudicial, that action was imputed to the state for purposes of prosecutorial misconduct, and that's on page 61. Similarly, a law enforcement agency that's working closely with prosecution of a case is deemed to be a part of the prosecution team itself for purposes of discovery disclosures as well as Brady requirements. Um, and that's cited in State v. Pendleton. I believe I cited that in my brief. Um, in all meaningful and re relevant contexts, the police agency and officers investigating a criminal charge are therefore treated as an arm of the prosecution for purposes of a criminal case, going back to Pendleton's case. Um, also, gag orders or non-dissemination orders commonly may extend in a case to police or other prosecutorial agents in the state. In the recent Chad Dayville murder case, the court entered an extension of its prior non-dissemination order to address those beyond merely attorneys in the case, specifically including but not limited to investigators, law enforcement personnel, and agents for the prosecuting attorney or defense attorney and essential court staff directly involved in the trial. Shout out to Just Sneeze stopping by to say hello. Thank you. I mean, that's, I pulled that from the order. Similarly, in the Koberger case, the court also entered a non-dissemination order that applied to the parties, but also to investigators and law enforcement personnel. It's worth noting that the ISC um, implicitly endorsed the validity of these orders last year when the media sought to have those gag orders vacated. The court- Wow, the victim is in the chat. He's saying blah, 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 rinse and repeat. Shout out to James, man. I appreciate you being here.
I didn't know he was going to pop up, but I, I appreciate it. Were you at the hearing when she was presenting this? That such orders, often referred to as gag orders, prohibit attorneys, parties, parties and witnesses from publicly talking about a pending case in an effort to prevent pretrial publicity from impairing the party's right to a fair trial. The court and the Associated Press opinion further stated that decisions relating to the issuance of non-dissemination or gag orders are even more challenging today due to the advent of the Internet and social media, which is precisely the concern here. Um, so They're concerned about the social media post, but we do have James Taylor, which I believe this is the James Taylor uh, that you saw in the video. Uh, do me a favor. Everyone put James in the chat or put a J in the chat. Uh, he said he was at the hospital at the time this hearing took place. So imagine this, guys. Imagine you get assaulted. Basically, it's an assault that's been reduced to battery. And you hear at you hear shortly after that they want to seek a dismissal. And you're like, well, why is it getting dismissed? Why do you why are they why are they seeking a dismissal? Oh, we want it dismissed because of the post that y'all the police department made on Facebook and Instagram. We're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it, man. Thank you, James, for being here, man. So salute to you and thank you for your service. Uh, the answer 06 is uh military as well. So uh, he said, I'm with the Nampa PD. Bump H H D R feelings. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, it's it's up on him, man. He he'll be in jail soon enough. Just let's let's let her continue, guys. Let's let her continue. Let her continue. So with that, Your Honor, I would reiterate my requested relief, specifically number three and four, which I think is um, the most important to issue the immediate removal and a corrective notice. Thank you. All right. Well, let me ask you. First. She look. She wants the post removed and corrected. Because she thinks it's going to one is prejudice and she wants the case thrown out It's two things. It's two things she wants case thrown out post removed. Now, I showed you the post. Now, what's going to get even moronic is when she starts arguing about the comment section of the post. Uh, that's why I was kind of scrolling through it. But she's going to the comment section is going to come up. She's going to go uh, full errand mode. You keep talking over me. Then I can't answer, and why am I here then? Questions here, I mean, you can you can stay seated. It's fine. Um, so when I look at your briefing, and I read through all the cases that you cited, this is the judge talking. Uh, you know, because what you're really citing here, obviously, you're citing the rules of professional conduct, and generally, as you know, the authority for that and uh, enforcement enforcement of that is the bar, the bar council, and it's typically not the judge's role to determine whether there's been a violation of the rules of professional conduct. And that's really what you're, you're essentially, as I understand your brief, when it really gets down to the heart of it, you, because obviously the Nampa Police Department isn't bound by the rules of professional conduct. They're, that, those aren't lawyers. You're saying the prosecutor violated the rules of professional conduct, right? Because of this section of rule 3.8, you're essentially stating that there was a failure on the prosecutor's office to exercise reasonable care on some level uh, with respect to what the Nampa Police Department uh, what you say that, you know, what you're focused on, which was the Facebook post. So, and I read through all your cases, you know, one of the main cases you cite is a state disciplinary proceeding. Essentially, the, the lawyer was sanctioned. So that's not what we have here. My goal is to make sure that there's a fair trial. And so that's the, the lens that I'm looking through everything here. Is Mr. Barry going to get a fair trial? Uh, and are all the interests at stake, the state's interests, the alleged victim's interests, defendant's interests, is this going to be appropriately handled? I don't know, given the facts I have today, I mean, help me understand, what is the risk here? I mean, is, is there really a substantial likelihood, just a quote from Rule 3.6, of any material prejudice? The trial's in January. You know, if there's a prospective juror comes in here and says, I read a Facebook post about this case, you know, that juror doesn't need to be on the down. I mean, you know, certainly that can be addressed at that time. So I'm really trying to understand uh, what you believe is really prejudicial here. I mean, to the fair fairness of these proceedings that can't be alleviated through ensuring that we seat a proper jury, preferably that knows nothing about this. I, I, I've never, you know, I will get certainly a number of jurors here that my sense is that in January, there'll be a number of people here called into this panel that won't have a clue about anything about this case. So that's really what I'm focused on here. So can you address that? I mean, what really do you think, I mean, what facts do we have here that the trial isn't gonna be fair in January? Certainly.
Here's the thing, guys. When they start, when they go into jury selection, they usually try to remove anyone who they deem is biased per se. Like, oh, are you former law enforcement? Okay, you're out of here. Do you know someone in law enforcement? You're out of here. Uh, did you grow up watching Power Rangers? Okay, if you grew up watching Power Rangers, they're gonna be like, all right, we object to this person being on the jury. Uh, they a fanboy or whatever. Did you do you think he's guilty? Uh, they out of here. Did you see the Facebook post of Hector David Rivera? Uh um on our website you're out of here did you see the uh video on the news you're out of here now they also can say yes i've seen the video or i've seen the post but you know i could be objective which you know uh if any lawyer is worth their salt and go they're gonna be like i'm not gonna trust you being objective i want my client to be in front of 12 people who have no idea that he pushed an old man going into the case uh but let's let her get back to uh pissing off the judge and guaranteeing her boy Hector David Rivera gets some jail time. So specifically, um, the large following that the Nampa Police Department has, they have, um, last I checked, which was when I wrote the brief. So 71,000 followers. 71,000 followers. Yes, on Facebook, 12,400 on Instagram. Um, it just amplifies the prejudice. A lot of those people, like me included, I, I don't necessarily follow them, but I check their page. A lot of people go to their page for updates. I know today there's a, a memorial for, I believe, a canine that was right. killed, and a lot of people go to social media, not necessarily following them, but they look them up. Okay. And so the posts themselves um, certainly exploit his role as a past role as a Green Power Ranger. I believe that has no relevance. I, didn't, I don't understand why they had to kind of make a mockery of it and already <laughs> condemn him prior to the trial. If you read through the comments, and they're extensive. There we go. Hey, if you read through the comments, they're extensive. Everyone is saying, you know, um, pretty much already condemning him and saying, you know, great job, Nampa police. And that's a cornerstone of our of the United States of America is we're innocent until proven guilty. And just the Nampa police department and then it being an arm of the prosecution, I believe, is extremely prejudicial. And at minimum, if the court's unwilling to dismiss outright, which I understand, at least having them remove those posts that could have any type of prejudicial impact that would impact a fair trial. It has no relevance. They've already had prior posts where they were looking for him. This was just a, a post to make fun of him, essentially. Well, let me try to- Oh my God. Shut up. Oh my God. Hey, you're making fun of my client. Well, this is the internet. Or maybe they're keeping the community informed of what's going on. But the her true motive is about to come out uh regarding the post why why do you guys think she wants to post down okay uh there's a reason there's this very specific reason she wants to post down not because she thinks this case is going to get tossed out because uh the nampa police department poked fun at a at him in a facebook post you know quoting the power rangers and uh giving the community an update on what's going on but there's a there's a specific reason she wants to post down. <laughs> OMG is a wife for a bargo. I understand the <laughs> timeline here. Uh, do you have, because I, as you know, what I have in my, in the court file is a lot less than what the attorneys have. So what is the timeline here? Because my understanding based on just what I know from this file is that the this was picked up in the national media. Yes. But was that a result? Because this post that you are talking about was August 8th, correct? Correct. This okay. was. So by August 8th, obviously the case had been filed, the warrant had been issued. I believe I had already quashed it. Yes. By this time. So by this time, wasn't this case already in the media just by virtue of the fact that there had been a initial post that said there was this incident that occurred and it had been on video, please help us find this person. And someone must have said, I know who that person is from a past role in a show. Yes. So what does that have to do with, I mean, so that's already happened. So from July 26 was the first post where they were looking for identification, right. which I have no problem with. Another one on July 27 identified but then later in August I just don't believe this has any relevance other than to 
prejudice my client on August 8th. They, I mean, just looking at the post, it's the Nampa Police Department with the Green Power Ranger. They Right. I have it. You filed it. Yeah. Okay, great. So I see what this post is, but at this point in time, this entire incident has been on, as I understand it, on multiple national and international news sites. Right. From the initial, I guess, posting that you don't have an issue with. In other words, they, as I understand Nampa PD, they have a pretty active uh social media platform that they use to make sure that the community is involved in finding people that are out there, which I, which I don't have any problem with on the 3.6 or 3.8. I don't think it's saying that, that uh, that's not legitimate. Of course it's legitimate. They need to do that. So that started this because someone must have saw, seen him and told Nampa Police Department that he had an involvement, Mr. Bear had an involvement in the show, and that was relayed to the Nampa Police Department. Right. So that's out there. Right. That's out there well before August 8th. And I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't have a problem with from the news that I've seen. It's more just reporting. But the, that post specifically, especially right. coming from Nampa Police Department, which is the members of the jury that are going to be on this panel. It's not going to be, you know, the International Sun or whatever magazine, right. what have you. Specifically, the Nampa Police Department, because it's a police department and it's not, you know, a people magazine. It's the Nampa Police Department. It's, an ex it's law enforcement. It's an extension of the prosecutor's office. That post in particular is concerning. I believe it's very prejudicial due to the mocking tone. Um, it's, I haven't seen any other reporting, even in, you know, the... I don't you hate when it's like, I don't, I don't mind what you say, but it's your tone. It's the way you said it. Like, how are you going, how are you going to assess tone from text? Tone is something you, you assess when you're having a conversation. Me and you Hey, all right, why are you doing this? you like, hey, based on your tone, you may sound a little bit angry. Uh, but how can you assess tone from text? The National Enquirer making fun of pretty much condemning him guilty already. That's uh, the issue. Has there been anything, maybe this is a question for Mr. Gorley, has there been anything on this Facebook page since August 8th posted by the Nampa Police Department? Not to my knowledge, John. Okay, so the last posting is on... August 8th. August. Specifically, that's the only post that I have a problem with is the okay. Facebook and the Instagram on August 8th. All right. So let me ask this. If we have a panel of 30 jurors and five of them have read the post, they they can go home. They don't need to be on the jury. How does that not ensure your client has a fair trial? Because we we'll have a panel that has knows nothing about this case or this post. Because I assume you would ask for them to be excused. Would you object, Mr. Rowland? Oh, yeah. Had a prospective juror read this post and was sitting right there and say, I read it. You would not object to that person being well, I, to be in all honesty, I would probably still ask the questions if they could view the trial um, in light of that visual, in light of seeing that, they could still be a normal juror. But right. at the end of the day, the state's not going to be objecting if, if someone has watched this video. Right. So that's my question because I don't want to muddle the roles that I have. I'm not a, I'm not, I don't oversee professional conduct of a lawyer. If someone violated the rules of professional conduct, there's a process that that lawyer can be. Uh, investigated and sanctioned if if that is in fact what it, my concern is to make sure we have a fair trial so how is it that by the time january comes around if i am very confident that we'll have a jury pool of prospective of, of, a pool of prospective jurors that will not have read this post i mean king county is a pretty large jurisdiction so i don't want to get ahead of the game i mean if we get to that point where it looks like everyone has heard about this which i highly doubt this is not anywhere near those other cases that you mentioned he is not that high profile now there have been cases in the past where like uh someone's so popular in the in the city they say hey we're gonna move it to a different county we're gonna bring in a different county judge we gonna have it, you know, in away from Canyon County where everyone is aware from it. But Hector David Rivera is just not that guy. I think this is something that came up in the news, and I think by the time we get there, I don't, my sense is that no one's gonna have a disposal. So I, my question, I guess, ultimately is like when I clip this video, it's not gonna get 10 million views because you know, by and large, you have a lot of people who have no idea who this guy is. I mean, he only did what one season of Power Rangers and came back from uh, for Mega Force. Like, let's let's get real about your the level of celebrity that this guy has. If we can ensure that the jury knows nothing about this case, what what's the point of the remedies you're asking for? Well, specifically the comments. I don't remember whether it was the Facebook comment. There was a comment I remember, and someone said, oh, "I would love to be a juror on something." <laughs> so I, of course, people can say, "Oh, I haven't read it," but a lot of times jurors aren't necessarily honest, and a lot of people just want to condemn him because he's the Green Power Ranger, and they've seen 
seen the video and he's guilty in their mind. So I just don't believe that. <laughs> I believe it's very, it's non-restrictive to just ask the Nampa police to even issue a corrective notice saying Mr. Rivera is innocent until proven guilty. Here's the thing, right? The prosecutor has the easiest job in the world uh, because, oh, the video, they see the video, he's guilty. Okay. You, you can be like, hey, you can ask literally two questions. Mr. Rivera, did you physically push James? Yes or no? Yes. Did James give you permission to push him? No. Did James threaten your life? No. Did you feel threatened by James? He probably going to be like, yes. He probably going to say yes. He probably going to say, yeah, I'm telling you, he don't want to go to jail. Well, oh, well, don't do the crime. Don't do the time. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. But isn't that just, okay, so there hasn't been anything and now you're going to ask for something else to bring it into the into the light two months later. Doesn't that create more publicity for the case? I don't think so. I think it corrects their prior. They've, they've corrected multiple posts. You don't, you don't get it. The judge just got her like, hey, if we pull that post and issue a correction, ain't that going to bring more publicity? And she's like, no, they've corrected multiple posts in the past. No, you're asking us to pull it down and put out a correction. That's what you're asking. That's what she, that's what she wants. Hey, can you remove that post and uh, issue a correction? And a lot of people, uh, she just wanted we need the world's smallest violin for this. Granted, they were a lot sooner, but this is the soonest that we're able to argue the motion. So I just don't think it's asking for a lot to, to have the Nampa Police Department either remove the post altogether. That If they remove it altogether, that takes care of even having to issue a corrective notice. Then if someone's scrolling through their Instagram page, nobody sees it. But the fact is that a lot of people spend a lot of time, I think it's seven hours a day people spend on social media, which I think is asinine. I read that somewhere. <laughs> seven hours a day on social media is the average person. All right. So okay. those are my well. I, I, again, I really want to focus on the role and the authority, and that's I think the question I brought up right away was a lot of what I saw in here did not implicate and none, none of you, everything that you cited. This isn't about. Uh, I'm a few inches taller than him. I would be afraid of me too. Uh, be careful, James. They're gonna be like, "See, James admits." I'm telling you, he's gonna pull that he was afraid for his life when he attacked you from behind, like the coward he is. Uh, he's not. He's not about taking accountability at all. He wants his case dismissed because Nampa posted about it and he's uh, afraid of uh, prosecutorial bias. Give me a break, man. You're guilty. I get it. Innocent. He has a presumption of innocence until proven guilty. But when we got your ass in 4K, a trial is just a formality. That's it. It's just a formality, Hector. I know you watching. You watching. Your mama watching. Your baby mama watching. Your friends watching. Uh, if you had real friends, they would have tell you. This was a clown move on your or on your end, on your lawyer's end. Uh, and it's all it's going to do is um, confirm jail time. They need to lock your ass up. You're a monster. Get you off the streets. You got all these different battery charges. You're a repeat offender. This is not some one time isolated incident. This ain't the first time. It's like, what, your third or fourth time? Like, come on, man. Any prosecutorial misconduct during a trial, which is most of what the cases that you cite deal with, is really prosecutorial misconduct. This is pre-trial publicity, uh, you know, four months away from trial. So if it was a higher profile case, I could see taking some, you know, corrective. Hey, if it's a high profile case, in other words, Hector, you're not that guy. Remedy similar to those situations like you cite. Um, but, you know, I don't have any concern that, you know, the juror panel is under, under oath. If anyone has made a comment about this case on a Facebook post or read that Facebook post, I don't think that they will be on this jury. So, uh, all right. So let me have, hear from Mr. Gorley. Yes. Go uh, just quickly, Your Honor, I just want to make note that the warrant was quashed on August 7th. And so the whole post that we're talking about today was on August 8th. I think it's completely reasonable to believe that NPD might have not known the warrant was quashed since it was simply a day afterwards. And when it comes... Will they reference that in here, though? They do. Do they? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, I, I'll retract that. I think it says in here that it looks like maybe he's taking care of it. So I think that has to do probably with the notice of appearance. Okay. But in, in regards to the defendant's motion before the court today, um, starting with the motion to dismiss... And the state's going to stand on the argument that it presented in its objection. Um, the only thing additional that I would add is when it comes to a motion to dismiss, that should be 
the last possible choice that's taken in any criminal case. The Idaho criminal rules, criminal rules of procedure, they allow for a vast amount of the defense to take if they want to reconcile this, this alleged prejudice that's on, on their client and the state just truly feels dismissing is not the appropriate action as of now. And in regards to the defense's remaining requests from the court, the state just doesn't see that the court has the jurisdiction to do what the defense is asking. I don't, I don't think the court has jurisdiction to force the Nampa Police Department to create a new post. Um, and I don't see any authority from the court to, to force Nampa Police to take down the post they already have. Well, okay, so let me ask the question then. Ms. Myers, you're not asking me to order Nampa Police Department to do anything. You're asking me to order Mr. Gorley to tell, right? Yes, as I used to work for the prosecutor's office, and we would frequently talk with law enforcement and say, hey, this is a problem. So I just... Like, hey, this is a problem. Can you remove the post? Or, hey, this is a problem with the investigation. It hasn't come out yet, but she's about to uh, say why she wants the post taken down. The fact that she used to work for him means nothing at this point. Speaking to their social media is just a conversation. It's literally just taking a post down. And it has the case has already started. Nobody's out looking for him. I don't understand what purpose it has other than prejudice. You know, even if it's the least restrictive means, it's just taking a post down. Okay. But again, you're ordering, you're asking me to order. Yes, correct. Okay, go ahead. Um, but other than that, Your Honor, this, the state is just going to submit to the court and stand on its brief. I, I do believe we can have a fair trial, and I do believe all these issues can be dealt with during, during voir dire when we're selecting her. So what is your view, Mr. Gorley, of your role under 3.8F with respect to the key phrase that Ms. Myers has highlighted, which is that a prosecutor must exercise reasonable care? What do you believe that means for you? Well, Your Honor, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of my office. Well, um, you are here on behalf of your office. I, I know you are. I know. Hey, like Ninja, when I go out, I'm speaking on behalf of my organization, whether I want to or not. That's why I don't be saying nothing. I keep to myself. Prosecuting attorney on behalf of the elected prosecutor. So, and that's what you said on. today is on behalf of your office. I, I guess I would say I don't want to speak on my office beliefs on this rule necessarily. I can I can tell you that my understanding is we have a duty to <coughs> inform our law enforcement about the rules they need to follow. Inform them on what is appropriate when it comes to the media because the state as well wants to ensure that we have fair just trials. And so that is that that is the purpose. We want to make sure we talk to our law enforcement and inform them. That there's certain things that they can do that will in, in, inhibit that justice from from, act, from going forward accurately. And I can tell the court that we that my office does communicate with our law enforcement on a yearly basis, ensuring that they understand from our perspective what they are allowed to do and what they are not allowed to. Do. Okay. So, what is your belief then specifically with respect to this post? I understand generally you communicate with law enforcement. But Ms. Myers has essentially, if I read the brief, she's accused your office of professional misconduct. I guess it would have to be an individual attorney because I don't know that an office can be sanctioned, but uh, she's accused your office of professional misconduct because you did not either prevent this post or I, by extension order to be taken down. It's a pretty serious accusation that she made. So what is your response to that accusation? Now, here's the thing, right? As the prosecutor, you have no say over what the police department posts on their social media. And the judge is like, hey, she's accusing you of not telling them to take this down. Um, if he didn't make the statement, hey, I didn't make that statement. That's someone at the police department. I didn't make the statement. I didn't tell them to make the statement. So if you're trying to get me for some prosecutorial bias, how? I'm, I'm only responsible for myself. Now, if he would have said, hey, post this about him, then you probably have a, a stronger case. But that's not that's not what's happening. Yes, Your Honor, the state would adamantly object to any allegations of any professional misconduct um, on the Canyon County Prosecuting uh, on the Canyon County Prosecutor Office or myself as the lead prosecutor in this case. Okay. Well, I understand you object, but is there any more specific specificity you can provide me? Because let me ask you, you agree with me that if this post had been posted on your office's website, that would be a violation of 3.6 and 3.8. Do you agree with that? Well, let me at least the judge is giving a little bit of pushback, but you know, it's all a dog and pony show for sometimes because you think this judge is about to dismiss this case over a Facebook post when someone was literally uh attacked. Now you can just say batter because that's the charge, but it should be like aggravated assault. But um if James is a little bit older, it would have been. Let me review the rules real fast. All right. 
Now, to be fair, while he reviews the rules, here is the Facebook post. Give me a second. The Facebook post reads as follows. In the world of Power Ranger Samurai, we feel the wrath of your disappointment, Nampa. For years, they protected us, battling the forces of evil and keeping darkness at bay. And then the battery in incident happened on July 26th in the parking lot of District 208. This is pretty much reciting uh, the probable cause uh, affidavit where the suspect pushed the man with the walker to the ground and fled. These are all truthful statements. These are all things that happen. That's a truthful statement. We're pretty sure you saw the video here and nearly everywhere else. We're grateful the victim is okay. Our hope was to summon the power once again. Community crime fighters were united. But the suspect ran away and hid, which he did. We saw on the local news today and confirmed through the court that the Green Power Ranger, a.k.a. Hector David Jr., a.k.a. Hector David Rivera, is taking care of Nampa PD misdemeanor battery warrant. We actually think his attorney is taking care of it, but you know what we mean. Mr. Ranger has a court date later this month. Our hope is he stops hiding, owns his action, and does what the court orders. Um, and this is the post that his attorney is saying that, hey, this is uh, misconduct on the prosecution side, prosecutorial bias. We're not going to find an impartial jury. All this yada, 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 yada. Shut up, bitch. Let's keep it going. My man, the, the, the prosecuting, the, the prosecutor is like reading the law to see if that post, if he posted would be violating uh, the rule 3.8 and 3.6. Maybe you don't because there's ways to argue it, but I'm just wondering when I go through the post itself, does it violate? I guess I really want to focus on 3.8. Your Honor, if I can have 10 minutes, just so I can review these a little more securely before I give an answer to the court. 10 well, minutes. I'm not 10 minutes. If you, don't, if you don't have the answer, I mean, this was something that was in the motion file. Jesus. You can say, hey, I don't think so. <laughs> you can say that. I both 3.6 and 3.8. So I'm yeah, gonna... You know, I'm just going to stand on what, what I said. Okay. All right. Well, uh, as far as you about this. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Specifically in the post, what's so concerning is that the statement where they say Mr. Ranger has, we saw in the local news today and confirmed for the court that the Green Power Ranger, a.k.a. Hector David Rivera Jr., a.k.a. Hector David Jr., is taking care of his Nampa PD misdemeanor battery warrant. We actually think his attorney's taking care of it, but you know what we mean. Mr. Ranger has a court date later this month. Our hope is he stops hiding, owns his action, and does what the court orders. So I don't understand why they're saying they acknowledge that he's taking care of the battery warrant, and then they say they are putting it on me taking care of it. Well, that's not inaccurate, though. I mean, you did, in fact, file a notice of appearance. You asked for it to be quashed. I always, in a misdemeanor case with a book and release warrant, if the defendant retains counsel and enters appearance as you did, I always quash the warrant. I think the rules strongly suggest that I should do that. So I don't see that part as being inaccurate. You took care of it. I think it could be construed as he's not doing the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. But regardless, the biggest problem that I have is that they say that their hope is he stops hiding and owns his actions and does what the court orders. So I don't understand how he's hiding if he's already taken the, the warrant had been quashed the day prior. They acknowledge it. So okay. they're making. But how does it have okay. a substantial likelihood of materially prejudicing a trial in magistrate court in January that this post was made that made a comment that I understand your client's position about reading that comment. But this is literally like getting upset that somebody posted something about you that potentially could be taken negatively. Uh, on the internet. Now I get it that, you know, his, his freedom is on the line, but he put it on, he put himself in this position, but no way, shape or form is this going to make him have a unfair trial. And he would be an idiot to take this to trial considering all the evidence is, is up against him. Can I really say that that comment is going to substantially prejudice his right to a fair trial? Well, I certainly think so because of course you if think it's so. coming from the Nampa Police Department and they're acute, he's already accused of um, the charge that he's facing through the court system and then they're saying he stops hiding. You know, just spending time, I haven't refreshed the comments and seen if anything is new there, but everyone is saying, oh, of course he's running away. So it's just showing that, oh, he's running away. He he must have done it. So it's well, painting him in a negative light. It's okay. prejudicial. And that's why specifically the 3.8 where it says that the prosecutors have the duty to exercise reasonable care to prevent investigators, law enforcement personnel, or the like from making extrajudicial statements that the prosecutor would be prohibited from. Certainly, I don't believe that it would be appropriate for the prosecutor to post this. Therefore, I don't think it's appropriate for law enforcement to post. And that's why I think the least restrictive means would be just to take the post down. Now, 
Look, who who supports this woman in the chat, guys? Who supports him? If you support her, if you support Hector and the police removing this post, if you support her, I'm looking for people who support her. Put a one in the chat if you support her in getting this post removed and maybe the case dismissed. Like she's really upset about the post, but she's she's playing it coy. And like I said, hey, her true feelings are about to come out. We only have four minutes left. Watch what she says. Period. To err on the side of caution so that my client isn't prejudiced in any way, shape, or form. What authority do I have to order that, though? Can you point me to a specific? Well, certainly non-dissemination orders are frequently done. So I believe that would be the case here. We could order a non-dissemination order, a gag order. What is the finding, the threshold finding, though, that I have to make? I mean, you brought up two cases that have, they're so dissimilar from this case. You bought a Coburger and... Uh, the Daybell case. Well, specifically because those cases are publicized. I don't know if the media is right. going to report on this again. My client has. Hey, we reporting on all this shit. She's going to be like, well, this Henry guy, he, 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 he legally obtained the audio and he's posting it. And about 500 people are going to watch it because my client is so popular. Some film coming out later this month. And there it go. There it go. There it go. Did you hear it? He has a film coming out later this month. She don't care two shits about anything. She don't, you know, she she damn sure don't think her client's innocent. Uh, but there's a movie coming out. I believe he got like some Christmas movie coming out on Netflix that he's going to be in. And he probably can't be a part of the promo train with this shit hanging over his head. Well, specifically because those cases are publicized. I don't know if the media is right. going to report on this again. My client has some film coming out later this month. And so I don't know. Oh, we can't unwind. There, there's nothing that this court can do that is going to change what's online. Right. We can't control that. But what we can help is the Candy County Prosecutor's Office, Napa Police Department, Candy County Sheriff's Office, or Caldwell Police Department. Those are with in our authority and what we can those I think are the most important if something's coming from those outlets I think that has the most weight but here's the thing they they would have to have the judge would have to have the authority over the social media as well as the prosecutors where these offices are separate you would have to literally go to the police chief to say hey or who or and maybe not even a police chief you might have to go to the mayor uh, because that's usually the police chief's boss. Obviously, we can't control people scene, and I don't really care about that. I care about what's affecting us here in Canyon County, what the 71,000 potential jurors are going to see people engaging in that last, if it's true, people spend seven hours what online. What's the last comment? Well, I don't, let me see. Does anyone know? I don't have a Facebook, so I had to log in. Through. I don't either. So. so I would have to. Yeah, man, I tried to get pictures of all these ninjas. None of them got Facebook. So I had to like use like their their legal pictures to get these. AI images to log in through Facebook. But I'm gonna get right. the super chats in a second. Well, we got two minutes again, left. There's two threshold uh, standards here. One is substantial likelihood of really prejudicing the trial, and the other one really has to do with extrajudicial comments of substantial likelihood of heightening public condemnation. Uh, condemnation. And I really want to look at the type of case we have here. Whether you know, essentially, this is a uh, concern more for a higher profile case. This obviously came out in the news. Uh, my sense like if he was P Diddy, I would probably get it is that it's completely uh, that it will be completely off the radar uh, by the time this thing comes around to trial. Um, so that that's really the lens. I, I'm not here to decide whether Mr. Gorley's office violated the rules of conduct. If they if they look at this and decide that they want to talk to the police department about it. Uh, maybe they have or not, I don't know. But if they decide that it's their obligation to do something about it, they have their lawyers, they know their obligations. My concern is that the trial is fair for everyone, not only Mr. Rivera, but the state's interest in making sure that they have the opportunity to present the case and, uh, and also that it's fair for Mr. Rivera. So let me look at it. I always issue written decisions. Well, not always, but for better or worse, most of the time I issue decisions. And I want to look at the case he cited, and I just want to kind of look through it a little bit. So I'll get a written decision out and think about it again. I My main concern here is I'm, not, I'm certainly not going to dismiss this case. I don't <laughs> think that there's any... You hear, hey, hey, I'm just letting you know, I'm not going to dismiss this case. I'm going to get you something written. Uh, but yeah, I'm not dismissing this case. If this judge was to dismiss this case, 
he will be removed. This issue written decision is well, not, Especially for this reason. Always, but for better or worse, most of the time I issue decisions. And I want to look at the case you cited, and I just want to kind of look through it a little bit. So I'll get a written decision out and think about it again. I My main concern here is I'm, not, I'm certainly not going to dismiss this case. I don't think that there's any basis for dismiss this case for these reasons. I want to look at is there some other remedy that I have the authority to do in my role, which is not, again, I'm not bar counsel. So I want to look at that and see if there's something that gives me that authority. I'm not convinced that I really have the authority that you believe I have in this type of case, but I'll look at that uh and I'll get you a decision as soon as I can. We have everything set right in this case as far as status conference and jury trial, yes. right? Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, anything else? No, you're not. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much. All right, well, thank you for wasting the uh, half an hour of the court's time with this bullshit argument. Now, to, you know, let you guys know, the, uh, <laughs> first off, let me acknowledge these super chats. Uh, shout out to my man Dust, who says, they are grasping at straws because they know he is cooked. Yes, 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 yes. That nigga is guilty. Uh, he's done so, buddy. Uh, this is the definition of green no more. The candle is burning out, my friend. The candle is definitely burning low. Uh, but, you know, the state did have a, a nice objection to it. Um, we really don't need to get into the weeds because, hey, it's, it's gone. It's done. Uh, but the state acknowledges that the prosecution and law enforcement are part of the state, but the Kenyon County Prosecutor's Office did not release or authorize the release of media statements in question. So that that Facebook post, they didn't do it. However, there are compelling societal interests and in free dissemination of information about legal events and proceedings. The public has a right to be informed about these threats to its safety and security measures. Additionally, the public has a legitimate interest in the conduct of judicial proceedings, particularly in matters of the broad public concern. So they're saying, hey, they submitted this to the judge. The court should deny the defendant's remaining request. Uh, the defense has failed to articulate a legal claim demonstrating conflict of interest for the Kenyon County Prosecution Office and thus has not justified recusal. Uh, consequently, the defense failure to state legal claim warrants the denial of the motion to dismiss, which I'm about to show you that he got dismissed. And the Idaho Supreme Court uh, criticized such deficient motions under Idaho criminal. I'm sorry, Idaho criminal rule 47, stating that the rule mandates uh, inclusion of grounds for the motion, which uh, she didn't really have much to stand on. And here is the meeting meet minutes from it. That shit was denied. It's gone, buddy. Guess who's going to jail? Guess who's going to jail? And as you saw, James Taylor, uh, the victim of Hector David Rivera, was in the comment section. I spoke to him earlier. They are looking for a thousand dollars and and six months in jail. Six months in the pokey. Bad, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Um, and it's unfortunate because you know this all could have been avoided, but you know. Uh, sometimes people think they're bigger than they are. Now, notice that uh, this wasn't like, oh, we need to dismiss it under being innocent or being provoked or any any goofy stuff like that. So, Hector, are you more resilient than me? The answer is no. Nope. No. Uh, take accountability um, for what you've done and do your time. And maybe there'll be maybe there'll be something for you on the outside. Uh, but taunting me on the Internet not worth it. I, I don't, I don't think that's going to do anybody good. Like you getting butt hurt over a Facebook post. So what do you guys think of the audio of it?